many of my podcasts and the, and the video content that I produce has to do with philosophy. And today, it, we're going to step away from that a little bit and go toward what I think is probably my second or third uh, greatest passion, which is uh, being our best self in terms of being producers in business or, or whatever it is that we're producing that other people want. And this is a huge, huge issue in our world right now. Uh, for the last several years, I've really started noticing you just can't find good people. And I know that business owners, especially small business owners, have been probably saying that for centuries. Uh, whether there's a lot of people looking for jobs, unemployment is high or low or whatever, eh, that's kind of part of being a small business owner is complaining that you can't find good people. And in my particular situation, I see it. I don't experience it because I have a, a unique niche uh, business that it doesn't affect quite as much as it does most people. So I have been very fortunate to have escaped some of this, but it, it still just shows up in every way, orders late, and, and just overall observation of a workforce that doesn't care, doesn't work hard, isn't all that motivated. And there are individuals within it that do, but overall, I wouldn't say that 90% of the people that are out working are excited to be there each day and they're doing what they love, either because they love doing the thing or they love the money that they're getting. Their goal is to, to do the best possible job they can and, and do it quickly, efficiently, and with excellence. And yeah, it just, that ain't happening. People are doing the bare minimum for the most part, and it's just showing. And so my uh, cousin, who's a uh, human resources executive in a recruiting firm, and, you know, kind of, she's up there in uh, hierarchy of thing. She knows her stuff. Like, she's been around the block and has led different companies, HR departments, and has really been in the business for a long time. And she shared with me an article about the demographic drought. And it's a 42-page paper. It's, uh, I'm not going to call it a white paper because it's, it's been made simplified so that even small business owners uh, who aren't... Uh, you know, don't have a lot of time, can kind of quickly look over it and understand it. But if you ever have an hour or two to put into this uh, document, it's real, well worth it. The demographic uh, drought came out in mid-2021. And it really illuminated and th the problem and helped me realize, no, it's not just me thinking that it's it's tough to find good people and it seems weird, but it really is a, an issue. And so long story short, there are not as enough people for the jobs that are that currently could be done. And there probably won't be for a good while into the future. And so the purpose of this podcast is a very positive and cheerful and uplifting one. Holy cow, man, if you are a gal or a dude who is, I don't know, between ages, I'm not going to say 15, you can get started earlier than that. Between ages 10 or 12 and 30 or 40, my gosh, you have a future ahead of you. You have one of the best times in history that you have the world at your fingertips through the internet. You can just get on DuckDuckGo and find all kinds of information. You have, you know, odyssey.com. You can go and watch any video, how-to video you want. You, you have all these opportunities. Nobody out there wants to work. Well, I, and when I say nobody, I mean most people. I, I should be more precise in my language. Many people out there aren't doing that great of a job. The few people who, uh, the small percentage of people who really give it their all, they're smart, hardworking, savvy, blah, blah, blah. Those people are in such high demand. There is so much room for new people to enter just about every walk of life, I would think. Um, especially I think about the trades. If you wanted to invest a year or of your life into learning how to fix uh, LP gas uh, slash propane appliances and how to connect them and how to run propane uh, lines from a propane tank underground into a residence and then punch a hole through the floor 
run it up, hook it to a refrigerator or a furnace, whatever. I live in a very rural part of the Rocky Mountain West, and we've recently uh, acquired a little property out in the, nah, not middle of nowhere, but it's pretty close. And we've been having some issues, and there isn't anyone available to come and do the work. The nearest is a town that's about an hour and a half away, and the guy there is the only certified guy within over 100 miles uh, who works on gas stuff. And I don't know that certifications are necessary, but I also just don't want to trust propane to some guy who says, oh yeah, my cousin used to do that. I watched him and I'll come give it a go for you. No, I want somebody who really knows their stuff. They're either certified by a company or, or somehow I know that they know their stuff with propane. And I can't find anybody. So this one company, they would have to send the old man who's in his 70s or 80s now. He, he is certified. He's been through a bunch of classes and has been doing it forever. He knows how to do propane gas kind of stuff. But he never travels alone. He has his helper. So it's two people that would be driving in the current winter weather, probably 100 to 110 minutes to get to our cabin. And then they would work for an hour or two and then drive all the way back and you're getting charged for two people, which is fair. Uh, but it is so expensive that I'm looking at, at a thousand bucks or more to simply have the propane furnace in the house adjusted to work better. The propane cook stove, the range, have it adjusted to work better and a refrigerator hooked up. That's it. And it's like a competent person could probably do that in an hour, hour and a half and they would gross a thousand dollars. So if you right now, I'm speaking to young people in your teens or twenties or thirties, if you right now dedicated yourself to learning everything about propane gas, blah, 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 it isn't as horrible to the environmentalist as fossil fuel. Well, I guess it is a fossil fuel, but it's not as bad as coal or gasoline. They seem to like, like it a little bit better. So Politically, it has a longer future than gasoline or diesel or coal. It's an energy thing that people really need. Not many people want to do it. And if you just dedicated a year to learning everything about it, I don't care that by the time you're finished learning it, you're only 15 years old. Word will get out. People will help you dodge the truancy officer as you go around making $150,000, $200,000 a year traveling around in your camper van so you don't have to pay rent or anything that has all your tools in it and some extra parts that you can learn through the school of hard knocks that you need to have. And you could travel around doing propane repair and have a very good business, make a very good life for yourself. Meeting so many people, learning so much. I mean, what a rich, wonderful opportunity. That's just one example, obviously. This, just, this is just something that came to mind because of my recent experience. And the same is true in so many different areas. And if you're, if you're more of the creative type, and you don't want to just fix broken propane dryers, clothes dryers, because you think that's old and it's headed out, okay, fine, you don't have to do the old boring stuff. Start something new. Like, there are a lot of people who are not getting medical care since the panic of 2020 started, I, I haven't been to a doctor or a dentist. I can't go. I have to wear a mask. I'm not going to wear a mask. So all this preventative care that I should be getting, I would love to be getting, I'm not getting. I haven't had my teeth cleaned since 2020. And usually that's a couple times a year thing. Well, that problem is going to continue and it needs to be solved. How will you, young medical person, solve that problem. Yeah, I know you have medical boards you have to deal with and, and government and, and all these. But there are lots of challenges, lots of barriers to entry. But somebody's going to solve the problem of how I can get my teeth cleaned without wearing a mask. Somebody's going to do that within the upcoming years. And if this little scare tactic thingy goes away, the whole coronaphobia thing, if it goes away, you know, there's going to be a new thing. But the savvy, sharp entrepreneur has so much opportunity looking for problems like this. I just mentioned two problems I have. Medical, you know, health, dental care, and uh, propane. Like, those are just two tiny little things. 
You can invent a whole new industry doing things. This is your time. This is, you, you are so fortunate. Yeah, the world sucks. A lot of stupid people. You're living in a live, uh, you know, episode or live version of idiocracy. Yep, definitely. I get it. And that sucks. But there are so many opportunities right now. So I'm saying get something that you, you think you wouldn't mind doing for the next 10 or 20 years. Get on it. Learn everything about it as you're doing that. Write books about it. Become an expert in it. But really deeply dive into something and then stick with it for the next 20 years. And you are going to be filthy, wonderfully, beautifully rich. Yeah, just an idea. What do you think?